everyone and welcome to Talkin' Tuesday. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how acne creams work. And let me tell you, acne creams are different for every person. They're going to work differently on every skin. There's different ingredients in different acne creams. Um, whether you have dark skin, your age, what your genetic you know, genes are, what you eat, all of this stuff is going to affect that and even affect how creams react. Because when you put a cream or an acne treatment or a wash on your body, well it's going to mix with whatever's already in your skin and your diet has a lot to do with that. But today I'm going to take you through kind of the basic ideas um, and kind of what basically these products are intending to do. And this is different for different products, but this is the basic philosophy that doctors have for acne. Um, and then there are a lot out there that doctors don't want to talk about, such as, you know, food in relation to acne, um, exercise in relation to acne, these other things. Um, I'm not going to be discussing this today, but there's a lot of videos on those that I already have, such as Dairy Free, which I'll link you to. Um, and then we will be talking about that a bit in the future. But for today, I'm just going to talk about those basic things that these doctors want their acne treatments and creams to do. Um, and just kind of the basic things that these treatments are meant to do and how they kind of help acne. So as you guys probably know, none of the treatments are the same. Even if it says, um, you know, generic compared to this brand, there's always going to be a difference in the manufacturing. There's basically something different in every single product. I'm sure that a lot of people have already tried a bunch of creams and they say this isn't working for me. That could be um, because your skin is reacting differently. It could be because your skin is inflamed or you're having just a breakout. Um, and a lot of times people start taking a medication or start using a cream and a week in they start breaking out more and they, they freak out. That's actually a good thing. That means that it's clearing out everything that's stuck up in these skin because we have seven layers, right? And I'll link you to the seven layer scarring video if you guys haven't seen it. We have these seven layers of skin, right? So the pimple that's here, we start, you know, working in a week or so, it's going to come up. So instead of freaking out, it's just getting that out because we're not creating new ones if a, if a treatment is actually working, you know what I mean? So please note that um, this is what many acne creams do, and I'm just going to list them. And not all of these do them. Um, some of them don't do any at all. But these are just kind of the basics and how they work. The first thing is killing bacteria. Um, and as you guys know, a large majority of acne is caused by a little bit of bacteria underneath the skin that goes down that hair follicle. Here's the seven layers of our skin, here's the end. We have a hair follicle that goes down and it comes up here at the top which is what we have on our skin. Now that gets clogged and it causes like a little bit of oil right up in there. Right, and so then that, you know, grows and grows and all of a sudden we have a pimple. Um, so killing that bacteria, um, kind of debacterializing, you guys have all heard, use antibacterial, use something that's oil-free, and oil-free isn't always the key, but a lot of times it is, you know. Um, but antibacterial, you guys are sitting on honey, by the way, which is antibacterial, which I learned, and some people have said that honey has cured their acne. Have you guys tried honey for acne or not? Um, and if so, has it worked for you, or has anyone else tried it or heard of it? What are your ideas? Because you guys are sitting on some organic raw honey from Trader Joe's. Um, Sorry, but honey is antibacterial. So the, the theory is that this antibacterial stuff that we put on our skin is going to kill that bacteria. And instead of having this thing pimple grow um, full of pus, it's just going to kill the bacteria at the source so that it can kind of de inflamize and just go back to a normal pore and a normal follicle, you know? Certain strains of bacteria are exactly what's targeted because a lot of them are found in the skin. Some medications are also prescribed to kill bacteria in the intestines. So when we kill that bacteria in the intestines and everywhere else, It'll kind of stop the bacteria from, like, this kind of bacteria from existing. Problem with medications is that it can kill the bad bacteria, but it may also kill the good bacteria, which is why a lot, which is why a lot of people recommend probiotics. Now, when creams um, contain this antibacterial stuff, sometimes they can dry you out and sometimes they can make you red. For instance, benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid are two chemicals that are great for clearing out bacteria and stuff. Problem is, with extreme use, if you guys use a very high percentage of either of those, you guys may notice you're red, you're flaky, you're peely, um, sun exposure, you really have to limit. Um, there is kind of a downside to some of those for some people. Also, if you guys have ethnic skin, Indian, um, Oriental, Ebony, all sorts of different, Hispanic, you name it. Um, if you guys have darker skin like that, you have to be careful with salicylic and glycolic. Glycolic is only a little bit antibacterial. Salicylic and benzoyl are the main bacterial ones, but please be careful with glycolic and salicylic because they can cause a, um, a condition called pigmentation where the melanin or the color in your skin is intensified. So you have these dark patches. It may even be on your body already. You know, you have dark patches of darker color and everything else is your regular color. Um, and the only way to get rid of that is hydroquinone. Well, it's not the only way, but a main way to get rid of that is hydroquinone and treatments, and it's so much better to just prevent it. So be very, very careful when using those. Start with something very, very low, and always talk to your doctor or a skincare professional first. 
Another th uh, theory behind acne is to decrease inflammation. And this is actually not very widely known, and I'm a little bit upset about this because I think that a lot more doctors should be concerned with this and be talking about this, but acne is inflamed. Acne is angry, and we're angry with it. When we're stressed, when our you know whole body is inflamed, we may notice a couple more breaks out. And doctors don't wanna talk about this. They're like, oh, stress doesn't have much to do with acne. Trust me, I believe that it does, because stress, um, increases inflammation, increases androgen levels, and those pimples get inflamed. So sometimes, very, very off, um, very, very seldom, a doctor, a good doctor, probably, will uh, prescribe something along the lines of an anti-inflammatory cream. And that really helps to just calm down the skin so that other treatments can actually work. Because when it's inflamed and stuff like that, you not only have to battle the acne, but these inflamed layers of skin. And it's really hard to penetrate and get everything to work properly if your skin isn't even balanced. Um, additionally, some people have found that taking Advil or things like that have helped. I've never tried it. I don't recommend taking um, pills unless you actually need them. Um, if you take a low dose, depending on your you know, already existing medical condition, it may help. Uh, but some people have noticed that, because you know, pimples are inflamed. They're inflamed on the top of our skin. They grow like these little mounds. Um, some people have said that it has helped with that. So I've never tried it. Have you guys tried it? Has it worked for you? Be sure to post in the comments and kind of share with everyone else so we can be a big happy YouTube family who's really informed and um, kind of share our experiences. Another thing that many, many products try to do is remove oil, and oil-free is something to look for in products. Now, here's the problem. Um, some people think, oh, all oil is bad. Essential oils, um, certain uh, vitamin E oils, organic oils, not all of them, but many of them will not clog your pores, and that's a big misconception. People think, oh my God, oil's gonna clog me. There are certain oils that have been part of our bodies, part of our immune systems, like olive leaf or olive oil, for hundreds and you know thousands of years, those are not gonna do anything bad to our skin. Um, they could cause reactions, like if you put olive oil on your skin, not really gonna do much, but if you're trapping dirt and bacteria, like if you have dirt and bacteria and then put the olive oil on, that's a problem. Or if you put the olive oil on and don't wash your face for three days, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, but generally, these really, really organic, holistic oils are not gonna be a problem, and if anything, will even help you out a little bit. Uh, but why do we, you know, prescribe things that are oil-free or, you know, Neutrogena, oil-free, or this product is oil-free? Reason why is because there are a lot of different oils out there that are not good for our skin. Um, and some of those, like Vaseline, mineral oil, that's not been around forever, but it's generally okay for our skin. Only if you have very, very oily skin, use Vaseline. If you have dry skin, it'll just dry you out more. Um, I really do believe in Vaseline, though, because you're putting moisture on your skin, so you're saying, skin, we already have moisture. Stop making your own, you know? Acne needs a certain kind of oil to kind of survive on our skin, and that's sebaceous oil. That's what our body creates naturally to, lubric to lubricate our skin. So when applying Vaseline or these other oils, it stops that from producing, because, oh, the skin's already moisturized, we don't need to produce it, you know? Um, but many products go in and they try to get rid of this sebaceous oil. For instance, Benzoyl peroxide is one of those products that will remove that sebaceous oil. And when we get rid of that oil, the bacteria can't multiply. It can't really reproduce because it's like a baby. Think of it as baby bacteria. The baby bacteria, we have, when women have babies, our babies sit inside of that little pouch in our body, the uterus, and they need to be cushioned by that fluid. You know, babies live in fluid water, mommy fluid water. Bacteria is the same way. These baby bacteria cannot grow unless they have the oil, that protective oil, kind of like, you know, that fluid of a baby. Now, if we get rid of that, the bacteria can't live there anymore. It's kind of like us in air. Let's say that we have a house. Somebody takes all of the oxygen out of the house. We just can't live there. You know what I mean? So that's one way to kind of get rid of that bacteria is by you know, reducing the amounts of sebaceous oil there. Um, and there are a couple of other oils that are not good. For instance, in products that can clog pores, um, PEG20 I think is one, it's very, very sticky. You put that on, you will be clogged. It is in a lot of foundations, so go run, check your foundation bottles right now and make sure that it's not in there. The problem with some of these products is that they will dry out your skin, like benzoyl peroxide. Um, and the reason why is because we're taking away the oil. We have no moisture. So if you're using a product that is taking away the oil, make sure that you put a moisturizer on afterwards just to kind of lock everything back in. Um, and if you have really oily skin, think about a deep, deep conditioning moisturizer so that your skin won't produce as much of that oil by itself. 
Another one that is really often prescribed is exfoliants. And here's the theory. The theory is that we have this much app, we have this much layers of our skin. And in between these layers of the skin, the seven layers, there are some pimples all forming up. You know what I mean? And the theory is if we exfoliate, if we, you know, do dermabrasion, if we use a washcloth, if we use creams and retinoids to kind of break down that first couple of layers then we're gonna get rid of all the pimples that are up here and there's only gonna be these left and it's gonna be harder for them to grow because the sun, because we have seven layers to protect our skin. Sun shines through, still causes damage, but not as much. If you exfoliate in the sun, you will burn. So think about it. This is how much protection we have. We cut that in half. We have half of our sun protection. That was, that was weird. Did you guys hear it? Half. There it was. We have half. <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at this. We have half the sun protection that we had here because now we only have this much skin and it will burn much easier, but the UV rays do kind of help kill that bacteria because those UV rays are toxic, but they're toxic for your skin too. So the idea is that exfoliating will help this acne. All right, because you know, if we don't have that many layers of the skin, the pimples can't get trapped, etc., etc. I think that this is personally a huge misconception. I do believe in a little bit of exfoliating. I have noticed with Tazerac creams, retinoid creams, um, things of that nature, it has helped me. But I think that there is just too much exfoliating going on. Um, my doctor, once a doctor before Sonia, prescribed me a regimen that was, um, you know, washed with a retinoid cream something to exfoliate, um, then use like an exfoliating scrub, like the ones with the little beads. Um, then at night they wanted me to use a glycolic kind of wash. Glycolic is a sugar cane gel that will exfoliate you and it burns like there is no tomorrow until your skin gets used to it. And then they told me to go in with a Clarisonic. Let me tell you, after day one of this, my skin was burning water burned my skin. It was miserable, air was burning, there was nothing I could do about it. And I ended up getting pigmentation. What does that mean? Go watch the scarring video. I was tapping on my dermis, I was saying dermis, right? And my dermis was so upset and so angry that it created melanin, because it felt pain. What happens is that when the sun hits our skin, we produce melanin to protect us from the sun, because the sun, the UV rays are damaging, they hurt. So we protect melanin. Melanin is what gives us a tan. Now, if I go in here and if I attack my skin with products, it's going to feel pain. It doesn't know that this pain is not from the sun. So it's going to say, oh my gosh, we're being attacked. We're going to produce melanin, this dark pigment, to protect us. So you guys are going to get a dark spot here, okay? Um, and it's not going to be anywhere else, you know, and it's on your skin. And I had a huge blotch right here. I still kind of have one down here. I have gotten rid of mine very, very, very well over the past four or five years. So I am very, very happy about that. But it has been a long journey and it was just one day. One, oh, and then you know, for that entire week, I went in the, sun, in the car with sunscreen on, but I wasn't wearing a hat or anything. I was flaking and peeling all over. It was miserable. Never ever do it. I feel like exfoliating is just the quick way out. Some exfoliating is necessary because sometimes, you know, here again is our layers. Here is our skin, uh, not our skin. Here is our little hair follicle. Sometimes dead skin, because our skin is constantly renewing itself. Sometimes it'll get caught up at the top and a little bit of exfoliating is necessary to make it smooth and get that off. But when we exfoliate too far down, we are just ruining our skin and I do not believe in that for acne. Now the reason that some retinoid creams work is because they not only break that down, but they're also shrinking the size of the sebaceous gland, which means it's harder for it to produce oil. So that's why I do kind of stand behind retinoid creams. And like I said, some exfoliating is definitely necessary, but please, please, please be careful when doing it because there could be really, really bad side effects. Also, the creams, or not the creams, but the medications we ingest, they're exfoliators, skin thinners. That's why they say, don't go in light. Well, gee, how am I gonna avoid that? Um, so when we take these medications on top of all this other stuff that we're doing, our skin is just thinner naturally because, well not naturally, but because we're taking this medication. I just think it's a recipe for bad skin, wrinkles, um, pigmentation in the future. So please be careful. But the theory that kind of goes behind it is that it will remove the oils. It will kind of break down the skin so there's less for the acne to create. The sun will hit it more so that it can kill more of that bacteria. Um, and overall, it'll kind of help acne. And a little bit, yes. But when you do it too much, it is just bad, 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 bad. Also, some of these creams um, can kind of focus on helping new cells grow. That is really, really good if you guys are using some exfoliating things. So help the skin grow back naturally. Um, some exfoliating things would be like scrubs, glycolic. I think we might do a how-to on glycolic sometime soon. Tell me if you guys wanna see that. Um, 
but you know talking about some retinoid creams will do this um, and the Clarisonic I have a review on that that's really really old but you know that'll all break the skin down so be careful especially if you're eating medication that will cause skin thinning be careful to only do a couple skin thinners at once because it is not worth the risk and the pain and the pigmentation and just the sun damage you could get that would last in permanent wrinkles and bad skin in the future too also, exfoliating is like a temporary fix because it's going to come right back. The skin is constantly renewing itself, you know what I mean? So exfoliate just to get that top layer off, um, just so that it doesn't clog there at the top of the pore, but never, ever, ever do anything too drastic. So those are the three, kind of four things that doctors prescribe most often for acne and why they work and what happens when you use them. So hope you guys found this video informative. I hope I wasn't too crazy daisy because I feel like a crazy daisy little brain here when I was going, hef, hef. I sound like a dog. Anyways, um, is that what dogs sound like? I don't think so. Anyways, hope you guys um, liked this Talking Tuesday, and I love you very much, and I will see you all tomorrow. Love you guys, and talk to you soon. Bye.